still don't know what I was waiting for And my time was running wild in dead end streets Hello and welcome back to another One Chart Lesson. Today we are doing the classic David Bowie song Changes. It's another um, amazingly interesting David Bowie song. Every time I pull one of his songs apart, I'm just, you know, amazed at the chords and the intricacies of his songwriting. But enough about that. It's there's there's lots of tutorials for this song out there. Some are good, some are not so good. I'm going to give you a way to play this song on one guitar that sounds as close as I can get to the original. There's some funky chords in there as there always is or almost always is in David Bowie songs. So download your chart because you're probably going to need it. I'll take you through all the different sections including the intro which has some really nice interesting chords. Now we'll just step through the chords and I'll put the diagrams up as we go through because there's kind of a bit to cover and some of them get repeated. So we begin with a bunch of like really nice clean chords at the beginning. It starts with a C major 7. Now two ways to play this throughout this song. You can do this or you can do this. In the very intro I think it's better to use bar chords because the other chords following this are kind of similar shapes and positions. So we go C major 7, then a C sharp 6. Now technically that note is in it but you don't need to play that. I think it just sounds nice as a C sharp. Sometimes the less notes you have in some of these strange chords, the better it sounds. So C major 7, C sharp 6, then we go up to D minor 7, then up to an E flat 7, and then to an F. Now you can go to the F here, and some people play an F7 here, but I think it might be just a straight F major. Either way, it sounds pretty good. But it starts, and then it goes into this riff. Now the riff is on a D chord, right? So apart from that F, I'll just finish that thought. Apart from that F, you can play the F down there. And it sounds good because it's low and you're building it up a little bit. Then it jumps into the uh, D riff. So you play a D power chord, and you go... One bar, one, two, three, four, and then onto an F. Easiest to do that simple open F chord there. Do it again. Then it starts with the verse. C major seven. Now this is easier to play as an open chord, so I would do that there. Still don't know what I was. E minor seven waiting for. And that E minor 7 sounds very nice up there as well. You can play it that way. Still don't know what I was waiting for. F major 7. My time was running wild. G. A million dead end streets. To an F in the same bar. And every time I thought I got it made, it seemed that taste was not so sweet hold the G the second time around instead of going down to the F. Then we move into the sort of the next section of this verse, which is going back to those chords again, C major 7, so I turn my... up to D minor 7, up to E minor 7. So you see you've taken that C major 7 shape, you've changed it slightly up to D minor 7, but then the same shape up to E minor 7, drop it down a fret to E flat minor 7, Back down to D minor 7, down to G, and you do that again with a slightly different ending. And then it goes into the chorus. <clears throat> now the chorus is the bit that kind of everyone knows off by heart. The, the way to play this on a single guitar to have it sounding good is using open chords with descending bass notes. And by that, and I've put all these diagrams on your one chart as well, so by that I mean start with a C, ch -ch -ch changes, go down to a C slash B, so you're just moving that bass note down to the B, then A minor, then A minor. 
minor G. Again, you're just moving the bass note of your chord over to that G on the third fret E string. And then you go to an F, and you do the same thing. Walk the bass note down to a D, down to an E. And some people like to play an F there, and then drop that lower bass note down from the first fret to the open E. I think it kind of sounds a bit cleaner and better on one guitar if you do that. So the bass note is on your D string. Then you go to a D7, G. Now, here he puts an extra two beats in. So our timing so far is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two extra beats on an F, so you'll see on your chart it changes over to 2-4 time signature, which just means that there's two of the same counts, two crotchet counts in that bar. Then it drops back into 4-4 again. This time, the two beats come on the D7. And then we move into yet another interesting section, which is that time may change me. And it sounds best to play all chords in these first four chords. And the chords are A minor, G, B flat, F. Time may change me. Now these next four chords, they're played by piano on the recording. They're kind of very interesting and intricate, but I think these are the best way to play these chords, these four chords on the guitar. So we've got E augmented, D minor six, D minor, C, C major. You can do a C sus two there, but C major. So those last four chords, I can't trace time. Okay, so those and, and that's all played. There's funny timing in there and it kind of, I tried to mark out the timing accurately on this, but I think it's better just to say this is all in free time where it says time may change me because it pauses for two beats and does it does the next four chords, but I can't trace time. Pauses for another two beats. Then you've got a bar of C where it builds up and then we head back into the intro again. into those lovely chords again. So I turn my Back into the chorus. Now, the strumming in this chorus, the rest of the song, the strumming is very kind of simple. You just sort of brush through the chord. Nice, easy sort of strumming rhythm, not too much of a strumming pattern. When it gets to the chorus, you can do that and it kind of gives it a little bit of a, a Beatle-ish kind of sound, I think. Or you can... Either way, play it how you like the sound of it. If you do those chords, that's enough to kind of concentrate on to start with. But I think it's, it's kind of nice to just... The change two beats on the F and the same thing again you do those extra two beats on the F the first time through then you do the extra two beats on the D7 the second time through then we move into that section again where it goes time may change me but I can't trace time then the second time through, when you hit that C, you play the open D string and then the second fret D string, which is an E, to get you into the middle section. And 
again, just eighth note strumming there seems to work really well. It's just two bars of F. C, sus4, back to C. If you like, you can do a F back to C instead of a C sus4. To do the C sus4, you just add your pinky to the third fret of the D string and lift it off again. Sus4, C. Or you, if, you, if you want to, you can lean that top finger over and add the four that way. I think it sounds better down there on the D string. So once you've done that middle section, again, it, it repeats two bars of F. Back into the chorus. will take a little while to get used to as you can see because I'm still struggling with them time may change me I'm, at the end you do this twice but I can't trace time second time through that little end bit you drift into a C major 7 up to a D minor 7 E minor 7 back down to an E flat minor 7 D minor 7, do, 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 C sharp major 7, and then finish on C major 7. And that's the entire song through. The chord, the, the, the whole chart is kind of, there's two pages, there's a bit going on there, but it's fairly straightforward once you know the different parts. So get the parts under your belt, put them all together. It's a fantastic song, yet again, by David Bowie, um, what a master he was. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'm here to help. Um, in the meantime, thanks for supporting the channel. And um, we'll see you here again soon, I hope.